Hi and welcome to today's video in the Study on Fees Daily Vid series. Today's video is about studying in the US. In today's video, we will talk about every single step that you take from the day you decide to study in the US till the day you actually start classes. This is for those of you who are planning at some stage in the future to study in America. Watch closely and learn about all the things that you will have to do before you actually become an international student in the United States. Before the process starts, you have to make the decision on whether you really want to study in the US or not. Like every international destination, the US has several positives and also a few negatives associated with it. Remember, there is no one international destination that is the best for all students. Make sure you get all the available information before you actually make this decision. Once you have actually decided to study in the United States, then you are in stage one. Stage one is a stage in which you will have to do several things simultaneously. One thing that you will have to do in stage one is a little bit of financial planning. First, remember that you will be required to submit a bank balance statement at the time of admissions. So plan on how you can get your closing balance to be a little more than one year's full expenses at an American university. Also, get counseling on an education loan if you opt for one. If not, make plans for all the payments that you will have to make for your one, two or four years of study in the United States. Also in stage one, you will have to prepare for a language proficiency test. Though TOEFL is an American test, IELTS and PT are widely accepted in the United States. First decide which one you are going to attempt and then start preparing for it. Also, in stage one, you will have to prepare for and attempt a language proficiency test because this is a requirement in all American universities. First, familiarize yourself with the format and testing content of the PT, IELTS and TOEFL and then decide which one you want to take. Even though TOEFL is an American test, both PTE and IELTS are widely accepted. You may also be required to take a reasoning test, the SATs for freshmen undergraduates or the GRE and the GMAT for grad students. SATs opens up the road to scholarships in the US, so it's a good idea to prepare for and take it. GRE and GMAT open up avenues for admissions into the best grad schools and also grad assistantship. So it's a good idea to take the GRE and the GMAT too. While you're in stage one, it's also important to research a range of universities. Factor in, firstly, your course requirements, then your career goals, and also your location preferences before you make a short list of four to eight universities. Then, once you have your short list, review your short list to make sure that these universities align with your academic and career goals. Also in stage one, you will have to collect all your academic documents and documents that attest to your co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Your transcripts, at least three recommendations from teachers who have taught you important courses and any certification about your involvement in sports, community leadership, community participation and any awards and achievements. Once all this is done, we come to stage two. Remember, stage two starts when you have your IELTS, TOEFL, PT and your reasoning test scores and also all your academic certification. Stage two is applying for an offer to study in a university. Every American university has an online portal for application. Fill in your application forms, submit your academic credentials. Once you have done all that, depending on the university's workload, you will receive an offer of a place. Once you have done all that, you are now in stage two. Remember, stage two starts 
when you have all your test prep scores along with all your academic transcripts. Stage 2 is basically applying for offers to the universities in your shortlist. Every university in the United States has its own admission portal. Log on to this portal, create an ID, fill in all the forms, submit your academic credentials, your ID and any other certificates required. Once you have done that, depending on the university, you will receive an offer. Some universities issue offers in 10 days, some take much longer. Once you have received your offer, you will reach stage 3. Stage 3 is when you have a decision on an offer from all the universities and colleges that you've applied to. Now, it is time to choose your final choice university. After you've done so, log on to the portal and accept your offer. Once you have accepted your offer, you will be required to submit a bank statement. The bank statement must have a closing balance which is in excess of one year's full expenses. That is, tuition, living and expenses like books and insurance. Your bank statement must be uploaded onto the university portal and submitted. Update the portal to indicate you've accepted your offer. Once you've done that, Again, depending on the university, you will receive your Form I-20. Your Form I-20 is your actual letter of admission. It states that you've been admitted into a particular course, starting at a particular date, at a specific university. Stage 4 is basically the visa application stage. This starts again when you've received your I-20 and also when your finances have been sold. For your visa application, log on to the CGI portal and fill a form called the DS-160. Be very careful while filling this form. Any inconsistencies will result in problems later. After you fill in your DS-160, you will receive an appointment for your biometrics. One day after the biometrics will be your appointment for a visa interview. Now, you are in stage 5. Stage 5 is when you've finished filling in the DS-160 and gotten appointments for both the biometrics and the visa interview. At this stage, it is very important to pay the SEVIS fees. If you go to the interview without paying your SEVIS fees, your interview will not be held. So be careful to pay the SEVIS fees at least a week in advance of your visa interview. Also at this stage, it is important to prepare for the interview. Review all the usual questions that are being asked. Questions like why you chose the United States, why you chose a particular university and a course, what your career plans are, and how you plan to use your education in a career. Stage 6 is basically the day you give your visa interview. Make sure to take everything with you. Remember, your photographs should be exactly in accordance with the requirements of the embassy. If you have the incorrect background, for example, you will have to take your photographs all over it. Also, take your SEVI's confirmation, take your interview appointment confirmation and all other documents to the interview. Don't miss out on it. Make sure you attend the interview on time. In fact, be there a little early. It's okay if you're a little nervous about your visa. But remember, if you're a deserving student and if you can communicate properly in the interview, you probably will be issued your visa. So just take a deep breath and answer all the questions the visa officer puts to you the best way possible. Once you get your visa, which you will be informed of immediately after the interview, you are now in stage 7. After getting your visa, make sure you update your status on the university portal. Also, mail your university, particularly your DSO, your designated student officer, to tell them that your visa application has been approved. At this stage, pay your insurance and make sure you book your accommodation, whether it is on campus or off campus. In my opinion, for your first semester at least, 
it's better to take on campus accommodation because this is a much gentler introduction to being an international student in america than taking off campus accommodation in stage 7 you also have to plan your arrival date remember you're not allowed to travel more than 30 days before class start but it's the wisest thing to do if you plan to arrive three to four days before class start at orientation. This gives you enough time to basically recover from jet lag and also familiarize yourself with your surroundings. So plan your arrival and then book your flight tickets. Remember, most airlines will give you a better deal if you book early. Buy your flight tickets and do all the necessary shopping. Remember, there are plenty of things that are not available in America. Also, there are several things that are cheaper at home than in the US. So, make your shopping plan and shop accordingly. Stage 8 is finally departing your home country and arriving in the United States. The first thing you do when you arrive and you get off that plane is to clear immigration. To clear immigration, before departure, Make sure you have all your necessary documentation in your hand baggage. The necessary documentation is of course your passport, your I-20, signed both by your DSO and you. You will also need all acceptance and admission letters and your service fee payment receipt. Finally, you will need original documentation of all your education till now. Also, on a piece of paper, Write down the name and the location of the DSO in your school. Once you have cleared immigration, the next step is registering as a student. Remember, there are many courses among the University Liberal Arts Corps or electives that you actually have to choose from a list. So, work with your academic advisor to choose which courses you want to take and which you do not want to take. Then, pay your fees according to the courses you have chosen. And finally, move into your accommodation in stage 9. Stage 10 is when you actually start studying at the university. Your first day at university will be your orientation. Make sure you attend it and understand all the information provided in the orientation. Most universities have compulsory orientation. This is also a great opportunity to meet people who are going to be your peers for the next one, two or four years. Then start your classes. Remember, most American universities have very stringent attendance requirements. So be sure you are regular. Study Unifees brings you many more videos like this. Look at a collection of videos for IELTS, TOEFL, PT, SAT, GRE and GMAT. Also, look at our videos for studying in varieties of countries. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe if you like this video. And for more videos like this. For your plans to study in the US or any other country. Or for test prep. Connect with Study in Fees at studyinafees.io. Till then, all the very best and take care.